Hello, welcome to Coming Down to Earth, an online summit about conflict transformation that will invite us to explore pathways towards regenerative cultures in a divided world. Today I have with me Ria Bayek uh, that will be exploring with us a body of practices called Art of Hosting. And we will dive into it and see how this body of practices can help us um, in working and, and collaborating better and, and dealing with difficult issues. So, Ria, you are you hold a master in degree, a master degree in clinical psychology, and you've, you live in Belgium, and you have been a transformation change transformational change professional with a, a very rich background of experience and interests. You started working as a psychotherapist, integrating the body in the process of healing. You have been a coach and a mentor who combines deep compassion, bodily awareness, and the lust for life to facilitate transform. Oh, I'm sorry, I have to start again because one of the kids just jumped in. Amor, o pai tinha acabado de gravar, assim, boa filha, espetacular. Uh, olha, Martim, Martim, diz, diz o Tomé, abre, abre a janela, abre a janela, abre, abre a janela, diz o Tomé, e por favor não venham agora um bocadinho para aqui que o pai está a gravar, vou ter que começar tudo outra vez, amor, está bem? Obrigadinho, fofinho. Que bom que encontraste isso. Ufa, ok. <laughs> I'm I sorry know. for that. I you know. Life happens, so a bit yeah. of children's on the background. I yeah, wouldn't that's, mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you are right. I shouldn't have stopped it, but uh, now, now I've stopped. So let's let's start again. I'm sorry for that. <laughs> it was funny. You just found something we were we were looking for for a long time. So it was really happy. <laughs> Hello, welcome to you all to coming down to earth, a conflict transformation online summit that will invite us all to explore pathways towards regenerative cultures in a divided world. I'm sitting here today with Ria Bayek. Welcome, Ria. Uh, and we'll be talking... ...can help us to work through difficult issues and challenging situations. Ria, you hold a master's degree in clinical psychology. You live in Belgium. You have been a transformational change professional with a rich background and experience of experience and interests. Um, one of the things that is interesting for me is you started to work as a psychotherapist, integrating the body in the process of healing. You've been a coach and a mentor, combining deep compassion, bodily awareness, and you have you have a list for life, I can say, from the conversations we've been having. And you really, your drive is to facilitate transformation in individuals, in groups, and larger systems. You worked with systemic and organizational constellations and a number of other practices. And you are very interested in the field of leadership and consciousness and how this relates with communities in work and daily life. So welcome, Ria. I'm really happy to have you here today. And uh, we are on the third week of the summit, which is about seeding the future. So it's really offering people possibility to be in contact with different practices that can help us navigate um, difficult issues in us, in our groups, and in, in society at large. Could you tell us a bit about what, how... What happened in your life journey that led you to the heart of hosting and why you really felt drawn to it and yeah what how it how it fits in your your journey hmm. um, as you said um I worked as a psychotherapist with individual clients for a long time um and Slowly, my attention moved to yeah how to coach teams, and, and I think somewhere in that journey, I came across art of hosting, and 
Art of Hosting, the full title is Art of Hosting Conversations That Matter. So it's um, that we dropped the last two words, but it's actually, or the three words, it's actually about conversations that matter. It's not just any kind of conversation. And I think um, it kind of naturally flew for me from, I mean, when you have conversations in therapy sessions, I mean, these are conversations that matter too, you know? And so I, I don't remember how I came across the first training that I did uh, in Holland, in the Netherlands, but I went and two years later, I organized training in Belgium and, and from there it went on and on and on. Um, I think what we, there's a certain, um, I could say philosophy behind it. And the most important is actually that we say art of hosting is a practice. It's not some, it's not like one method you learn about it and now you have the, the diploma and now you're done. No, we say it's a practice and we have different elements in the practice. But I think that's really important these days that um, it's not learning one tool that will bring us in the new culture, let's say, or new working culture. So, so when you say a practice is like it's, it's a, in a way a, a way of being, a way of being in, in certain yes, situations. Yes, a practice is that you know you learn and you have to learn and you will learn a lot and then you still have to learn and it's, it's a bit the style of Aikido for people who know that. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a martial arts, but they don't do um, grades or like uh, or competitions. They do grades, but not competition. So it's, you learn against yourself basically. So like um, practice is mainly saying like, I'm in constant learning mode. I know that the, 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 the pathway of learning is like infinite. And, um, and I can see in the global network that we are, that what we can do now has already improved a lot since 10, 14 years when I came across it. So, and yeah. Perhaps you could tell us a bit about what what is like the the a bit, uh, some aspects of the philosophy behind it as a, as a starting point, and then we could go to more like practical aspects of uh -huh. it. It's basically the basic worldview, if you can name it like that. Is that that we are in a living that we are a living system, and conversations are part of the living system, and and human beings are a living system and the humans live in a world that is a living system. So it's not something that is set in stone. Um, and the practice is basically about how can you actually um, be constantly aware that, that we are all in a living system. And how do you behave naturally or learn to behave more naturally and unlearn a lot of, let's say, mainstream organizational culture behavior? But how, how can we be a living system that moves towards more health and more compassion and more inclusivity and all that because that's yeah i think that's one so, way of so looking. i heard like two kind of gestures in 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 what you were saying one is um, uh, um a practice of being more aware of what's alive in us 
and at, and by doing that, also acknowledging or being more aware of the places from where we are thinking and acting and thinking like which of these places are our own to take or which of these are informed by the larger culture, the places we grow up and that maybe are kind of getting us stuck or preventing us from really being authentic or being really uh, honest, authentic about yeah, about what we are experiencing and what that how that informs us. So is that it? Uh, that's one of the practice. I said there's different elements and we say there is a fourfold way. There's a fourfold path that's always happening on four levels. And what I think what you describe is like you could see it as the first, but there's no first and no last. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's it's growing your own awareness indeed, like what I'm saying, what I'm proposing, what I'm thinking, how much is that conditioned, ingrained, uh, or how much is that really uh could say authentic? Um and I think for a lot of people, it's a lot of learning to, to discern, like, am I just repeating what I'm always doing or always thinking? Or am I, can I just slow down, take three breaths uh, and, and notice, like, what is actually going on in me? Um, can I just really listen to the other or am I defending my position or defending how I've always done it, or there's a lot to learn in that, let's say, what we call the hosting self. Mm -hmm. And then there's, of course, how you participate in conversations. Like, um, how good a listener are you? And how good can you open a conversation so that the other feels invited to join in and not to defend? Or, um, so that's the the participation in conversations that matter and do it in a way that it becomes fruitful and does not go into conflict. Um, and then there's a the whole part, of course, as we are facilitators slash we call ourselves hosts of conversations for teams, for bigger systems, for co in conferences, for ongoing whatever. Um, that's how you learn, how can I invite others in, into that space? So how can I invite people to listen well? How can I invite people with a question that really matters and is not just superficial or doesn't hold a judgment in it or there's a whole body of, of learning of what are the actual questions we need to pose ourselves? Um, and then there's a fourth element um, in, in our practice. And that's more about how are we collectively learning, not just me, but as, as, as a group of practitioners, as a, as a team, um, are we really co-creating? Co um, can I just build on something that somebody else said? Um, can they just build on something that I have learned? Are we in that co-creative space together without feeling like, oh, I have to defend myself. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, or competing, yeah. I was thinking like how, or, how can we embody being a living, uh, learning organism or system? Yeah, and that's what I learned from or Nora Bateson, I think. Is she also on the summit, I, I guess? Uh, she talks about this. Living is actually learning. That's the yeah. essence of living. And for me, that was like, ah, indeed. Yeah, it was like an eye opener. So if we are em embedding the learning stance and not the learning as how we needed to learn in school, like learn these pages, and, but actually learning how to be and act 
in a world that has no negative consequences. Yeah? Or as one of my friends would say, like, not to build up negative karma, yeah? In, mm. in the, what is it, Buddhist language or, um, yeah. Yeah, you, you said something I, that I was sitting with as I was hearing you, the, that the art of hosting actually is called art of hosting conversations that matter. And I was thinking like in these days, in, in most parts of our communities, if we want to hold a sincere, open, honest uh, conversation that matter, we'll, have, we'll be touching difficult issues because we'll be touching the, the issues that matter most to people. They are more passionate about where there is more energy and most probably where there is more divides in terms of opinions, perspectives, different lived experiences. And I'm particularly curious how, what do you think are important elements when like, you know, holding a space like that and, you know, being able to, to navigate those, those very vibrant and hot um, atmospheres? Like what, what would you say like are the critical elements or things to be mindful enough that we need to tend to in order to be able to navigate it in a way that would be healthy or regenerative for the or generative for the the community and the people involved um i think one of the elements um as i just had a couple of days ago a conversation with people who want to bring some people from europe european levels and ngo levels uh together and to talk in a different way than normal style commission, European commission kind of debates and all that. And we realize that we have to invite people as the individuals they are, even if they are a member of parliament or, or the CEO of blah, blah, blah. Um, we have to invite people as individuals because it's only as individuals as personal engagement that things could change it's not as oh i'm representative of this and this is our standpoint and this is our viewpoint and i'm come to defend that against yours then yeah that's that we, we are kind of stuck in that it, it was a big context uh, um, i would say big conquest for society when we got in the last century this negotiation between different parts of society and then so things were built on a more uh, distributed way but it's still in somehow we are kind of getting into the limits of that when people come i often and i think it's also your experience in different settings of people coming to the same table and because of that representative uh, or that like baggage of that re con confinement yeah. of institutions, people are stuck in agendas and narratives that then lead to solutions or to, to outcomes that, that don't satisfy everybody. But then you, you walk down the corridor and in the corridor, people will say, you know, I, I agree with you. And that's actually, I felt that, but I couldn't just say that out, out loud, open. So I'm curious to see, like, could you kind of share some examples of how you've seen this being really shifting within institutions, big institutions, you've been working on some like systemic level. Uh, yeah. I wonder like what, what kind of things you've noticed that because of this invitation and because maybe of some other things that, that you put in place and the, the team who you work, the teams you work with, manage to really have open up that space for, for really having the possibility to have conversations that matter. Um, so, I've been involved with with um, bringing art of hosting into the European Commission and European institutions over I don't know almost ten years I guess, um, and the nice thing about that is now we can look back how things have shifted, um, even though there was never never the highest level of the Commission said like oh let's go in a participatory way, but because my take on it is because the commission is so big, uh, stuff that's happening on the ground has been trickling up 
And um, one of the nice things, nice recent uh, stories I've heard is that there is a new guideline on the European level that in a couple of years, I don't know, 10,000 tons of plastic or I don't know, remember the exact number needs not to go to the landfill, but needs to be recycled. Yeah. So they want to divert the plastic to recycling. Um, that's a goal to be, uh, to be reached, but how to get there? And so the people somewhere in one of the little bubbles in the commission are like, yeah, we have to deal with this, but how? And so they asked, people like us in to have that conversation and to try something new and not the the repetition of yeah you know but your plastic isn't good enough to be recycled or you put too much paint on it so we cannot recycle it well and so like everybody was blaming everybody in that whole value chain and so they invited people not to the table because they got rid of the table. They invited them into the circle, and they put the you know the the names like I'm director CEO of Coca Cola Europe or something yeah like they put these labels on the floor just before the chairs so that at least some elements were recognizable. And the nice thing about is or the most amazing thing is that over 11 months they came to uh, what they call now the circular plastic alliance meaning voluntarily they have made a, a shared manifesto and they have put their own guidelines and benchmarks and how they will do it it came from themselves. Of course, there was this this goal that was there somewhere in, in European law, but and the good thing is they they got away with like, yeah, but we from Coca-Cola, we find this and that's our point. No, in the conversation, these personal takes on what needs to happen was changed and then they take it into their organizations instead of the other way around. Like first the organizations make a standpoint and then they have to defend it. And then there's no room for movement. And so inviting into a circle and make sure they can talk with each other and have lunch together and get to know each other informally a bit more to go away from that official standpoint um, made it possible in the end that they have agreed on, on actually look at the whole value chain of plastic and packaging and all that. I'm like, wow. Yeah. I mean, it took, I think they started 2008 with this training still now, oh, that's 12 years, but it can be done. It can be done when there are people like us who learn how to host these conversations and what is important and which questions to ask. And all that. I can relate a lot with that because I, I remember a time in my life I used to be very um, categorical about who to work with and not to work with, you know, and there's this evil corporations or that, that kind of, of mentality that is really divisive. And it was a big shift for me to think like, well, this, this is part of the problem. So how can I open up to be like, to, to meet people and organizations where they are, but with a really open mind and open heart. And I've been discovering, that's amazing, and I'm curious to see what's, what, what you've been discovering also in your journey, but that often you find people opening up and, and, and sharing things that you never thought in, in the most unexpected places, just because you open up to that possibility and then you discover allies in, in very unpredictable places. So that's, that, that's, I think, most needed in these days that seems like, 
different parts of society are fragmented and there's a divisive, a divisive line that is getting is growing so yeah, yeah exactly i i had this conversation with this lady who have who has been working in european ngo european level like bringing the networks of different countries together and she's worked in many uh topics and she went to a recent com uh, conference where it were all business people, but talking about, I don't know what was the exact title, but, um, and the business people were actually complaining that their efforts are not seen and not valued. And she realized, like, just like you said, she said, like, Oh my God, I have been fighting these people in my whole NGO life. Like, we have to. Da, 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 da. And they have also good ideas. I might not be fully 100% agree with what they do, but at least see the steps they take. And I think a lot of our activism, I was like that in the 60s and the 70s. 80s still like fighting the enemy and then business is the enemy and whatever um and if we are a living system if we realize that everything is connected with each other we better respect all the other people and the other parts of society and and see how can we join forces in whatever we want to go, in what direction we want to go. And they can do something that we can't. I mean, if, if business puts themselves behind some good goals, I think they have a lot of power and maybe more power than, let's say, our activists' movements. or <laughs> And we all... We all do our best, and I think we need to learn or to become aware of, hey, whatever you do, I respect you, wherever you come from. Yeah, that's, that's really so much needed uh, these days. Oh, one, of, one of my kids is having a conflict with the mama. Um, <laughs> Yes, happens so, in life. Yes. Yeah, it's 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 part of, uh, part of everyday life, conflicts, tension. So, um, yeah, I was thinking like, is what other aspects of the art of hosting you think would be would be really relevant to share with with everybody that would be of service <clears throat> when you know engaging in a in in a in a real life situation that is potentially conflict was or there's conflict of interests or conflict of needs and people need to to find ways to navigate through that and so one of the things for instance i'm thinking is we have often this um we are impelled to to find the immediate solutions in order to solve we need to solve this there's that mentality of managing and and and, and solving and and you said in the beginning that it's the questions are more important than actually the answers or the questions are the driving energy that that really can can lead us to a leap um so i'm i'm wondering like <clears throat> what kind of different ways of of working with this could help like to say like maybe perhaps we need to stay more with the questions and not and hold our breath before jumping immediately into conclusions. So what kind of things are there that you could share with us? Yeah, I was just thinking, if we could just have a slow life, then we could just gather around the campfire and talk mm -hmm. it through until it's done. Um, I'm still in favor of... A, way more slowness than most of us live. But I think if we have 
a practice, like a circle practice, like could be as easy as, okay, we let everybody speak, we listen to everybody, and we go away from the debate culture and away from I want to win. And if we can install a way of really listening, um, that's already one one element that helps and also i can just tell you from two days ago um with my new partner and um, we were around a new website to be built and um we w- we ended up always in like <coughs> and i was driving my car and i came back home and i was like but well, what is his intention and what is mine like what are the values that we are defending like what we didn't talk about that level of values we were just on the surface we were like eh, 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 eh. yes but yes but yes but and so then we moved one layer deeper you could say like but well, what is important for you in in the building of this website and for him it was more like coherence and good user uh, experience and for me it was more like hey it needs to look up to date and it needs to look nice and so by moving one level deeper we finally saw each other and saw each other's uh, intention and how we were from that point defending but if we can just see like oh but how can we find the creative solutions to so that both of of these intentions are actually present and can be woven together and that brought the whole new level of understanding and the fight w- about it was gone and i think that's a lot what's going on in in conflict situations there is always there's always a deeper level of intentions or sometimes pain can be historical pain, can be recent pain, uh, can be from society. Um, but we need to dive to that deeper level and then from that and, and find what is actually the question. Um, what is the question and what is the purpose that we share because when you're in a team or in in whatever your project is about you all come with like make something happen like you have probably shared a purpose but is it clear enough or can you yeah go lever down that's the best i can name it to actually be on the same page again and see how in that deeper level you actually widen widen the space in which everybody and each intention can be of service to that shared purpose. So uh, one of the things that was emerging for me is how in order to be able to go that deep and then reconcile what seems like apparent oppositions or or different or conflict was needs or intentions is a, a, a need of safety i would say like many people these days particularly in western culture because of its being so competitive and so based on on separation and scarcity somehow it's like there's there's a, a deep uh, wounds uh, in our human psyche because of that that people have difficulties to re- really show up and be vulnerable and talk about these difficult things and, and in an in a honest way because they think they're going to be attacked or they're going to be abused somehow. So I wonder like what if you have any kind of particular ways that ground you or that support you in that work of, um, of helping people to feel somehow safe. And, may, may, and maybe even safety is a, is a issue of a, a Western issue, I would say, because sometimes you have to take risks. You have to do these leaps of faith in order to, to try to find alternative um, 
uh, outcomes because obviously we are producing outcomes that nobody of us wants. I would say most exactly. people are not bad intention. Um, yeah. yeah, safety. That's, um, what I would advise for every group that has a serious conflict is like, make sure you have somebody or a little team from outside that can hold you um, in exploring what's really going on. Because it's very difficult if you're already in the, let's say, in the heat of the conflict to actually be able to hold it all. And that's basically what we, when we teach and train people in the art of hosting, is like, what is it that you need to do energetically and practically so that people feel at least safe enough to open up a bit? And when a couple of them open up, the rest will join in. Yeah, but that's that's the role of 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 the of the hosting team as we call it yeah to to make sure that it's kind of safe enough um, you can never know it can never be totally safe for everybody because you never know which historical personal wounds can be triggered that it's it's an ideal to strive for but it's not something you can reach but um, and then have then have these practices and do a good framing. Like, this is how we're going to do it. These are the agreements we make up front so that everybody knows knows them. Everybody can say, okay, I agree. Yes, I will keep myself to this. And if we can see that from each other, that gives, like, already some safety. Um, and if somebody breaks the agreements, it can be, mentioned and we can come back um, um, it's yeah in, in our preparation we we said that like we many of us have pain from let's say the business style or negotiation debate style of working or being told what to do and then I see many people and projects wanting to do it in a new way, in a better way. And they drop all the, let's say, the nasty culture. Like, we don't want to do it that way. But they kind of naively expect that we can just, it will just all be nice and, and friendly. And we... <laughs> we are not realizing that we need new practices together to form that new culture that are, that are elements of the new culture of how we talk and how we organize and how we do companies in another way and how do we do actions that are regenerative, not only for the earth, but also for ourselves and all of us. And, yeah, and you mentioned also that there's uh, rituals and ceremonies. Um, maybe a circle practice and we work with a talking piece might not be a big ritual, but it is some kind of ritual. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not how I see ritual and ceremony from way back when I was raised in the Catholic Church, but it brings a certain culture, a culture of, hey, we take the time to actually listen to each other. Yeah? And it's a talking stone might be a stupid thing, but, and it can be anything. It can be my, can be this, it can be anything that we hold. Yeah, it was, it just reminded me of a ritual of some, some people up in the, in the, in the high north, in the very, very extreme Arctic regions, where they do one of the rituals that they do when they sense there's something need to come to life in the community is uh, they go and, and meet and stay for as long as possible as they can together 
in silence waiting for a certain song or a melody or something to emerge. So they sit there all together in circle and remain deeply open and, and paying attention to what is emerging. Uh, yeah. I just recall that. I, I wonder, like, because you've been working on collaboration with groups, with different people, you have also your own uh, organizations that that you are that you kind of founded and you have been nurturing and, and different spaces of change. What kind of practices or rituals or ways that you think are really useful to ground groups in a in a more uh, healthy collaboration and that they can somehow get also ready not to be open not to be caught in in difficult situations without being mildly prepared you know being grounded to that because yeah it's i kind of often find places of change like you just uh, described that people are naive because they somehow think that just because we we are well intentioned and you want to change the world that we're going to be fully embodying the qualities we want to bring to life but we are we are in a way in a moment also that is in between stories. There, there's a transition and we, we none of us is free from, you know, doing mistakes or, or acting out the culture we grow up in because it's like embedded in us also. It's an yeah, ongoing process we, of unlearning. What I see a lot is we are holding this huge tension, all of us, like, okay, somehow we need to pay the rent or the mortgage or something still in the old system and we want to contribute to make the new system alive and there's not that money that much money there and we end up in this huge spread like we have to hold that tension on personally or with our little family and that comes also into the spheres of of let's say whatever project you want you want to contribute to and one of the most simple and basic practices is like doing a check-in and a check-out. It's, it's so simple that some people find it stupid, but if you give time for people to arrive and to at least speak how they feel that day or how hey, I come from home just now and I have two two children getting sick. That's not fun. Um, or, or my partner just left me. Whatever, whatever it is, or somebody on the street was screaming at me. or It can be anything. But if we just know there is some background there is some history there is some emotional feeling in in the ones who are sitting around the table it gives us a different perspective like oh oh yeah you have children yeah when they're sick that's not fun yeah and and when when people can say like i'm not much used today because i'm totally caught up in a story with my mom or blah 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 then we realize when they're not contributing that much. We know why, yeah? So there's, you, you build in a bit of compassion towards each, each other. And yeah. I always also do it at the end of a meeting, but like close it instead of, oh, it's time, I have another meeting, let's rush, like, Let's close it, even with one word or one sentence. Like, how was it? Or what do you take away? Or very simple, minor things maybe. But when we close a space, let's also, when we open a space, let's also close it so that we feel somehow a, a, a level of completeness. And mm. these are just minor, minor very small things, but they have huge but impact. It's, but, but yeah, but they are very significant. I was just thinking, hearing you and thinking how multi-layered uh, this, this opening space and closing are because it's just like, so you cross a threshold, so you have in a sense, that, okay, this is a space we are coming in together and it's not the busy busyness of daily life that you're just rushing from one to the other and expecting to produce certain outcomes. Exactly. Taking care of ourselves and of each other. 
and I've often noticed that by, just by doing this simple exercise, you, you, you discover a lot of things from other people with which you relate, and actually they kind of strengthen our, our possibilities and our, our potential to collaborate in, in even more di- deeper and meaningful ways. So yeah, and there's I, I can't, so I can't many, say... Go, go. There's so many different questions you could ask in a check-in. Like, like can you tell something that nobody knows in the, about you in this circle. So you discover nice little things about people. Uh, yeah, it can be any question that fits, that fits your environment, but that is inviting to a tiny bit more opening up of who these persons are and not how these representatives or um yeah who who are these individuals that's mm. the point that we want to stress so we, we are we are almost approaching the end but I, there's there's still a couple of things i would like to to talk with you one of the things that that i was thinking is this this packed aspects of the, that is deeply embedded in in the art of hosting of of participation of of that you are co-creating whatever happens in in the spaces that we we gather and so one of the things for me that is kind of i often uh, noticed in particularly in in western cultures is people tend to uh, confuse participation by being the one that speaks or being the one that does and i'm thinking like for instance in a circle how important it is for those who are listening to allow each voice to emerge and through that way to allow the the the, um, the collective intelligence to emerge mm-hmm. and even with in, even with divergent voices because we're not like just looking for everybody to say yes and i agree but to really like sense what is to re, to honor what is there as as being part of that collective intelligence so i'm thinking like could you just speak out about that and well, if there are any any things in the practice of art of hosting that would be um, supportive to to encourage that people take part because one of the things i'm thinking also that as related with this is in the world of facilitators and facilitation there's often this tendency to control the whole process and you know make everything easy for the facilitator and for everybody around so to facilitate and i think sometimes we, we can we need also to invite yeah to to disturb the waters or in certain so there's an art in um, holding a space that is actually stepping back and and people take the lead and uh, and bring their fully selves into the picture and then there's also moments where by being in that place also as a host you can bring something to to be a, for people to be aware that they are maybe not aware that might be something disturbing or like disturbing the waters or sometimes it's just that people need a quieting and just mm-hmm. turning back to listening a bit more deeply so yeah could you give us a bit more insights maybe I, I bring too many things but we are coming to a close <laughs> so i'm thinking like we could spend hours talking about this because yeah 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 for sure and as, really... as, as we said it's it's a practice and you you keep on learning um and what you're pointing to mainly is um i think Art of hosting is about conversations that matter, yes, but it's mainly also like how to design the conversations, how to design a process of conversations so that co-creation can happen and self-organizing can happen. So it's not me as a facilitator who is guiding this is the outcome. It's more like I provide the, the, the minimal elements so that this group can do their best work. I'm not in their work. I'm just helping them to do their best work. And um, we have in, in, in art of hosting and there's outside this, there's methods, methodologies, that help you do that but it's also it's a really diff, different stance than being the facilitator who knows where it needs to go 
than what we say a host. A host is totally in support of where this group wants to go to its, the best of its, its possibilities and to the, the potential maybe that is there and hasn't been seen or hasn't come out. And to see that as, um, I would almost say like, if you can see your, this group of people in this conversation as a living system that wants to be healthy and that wants to move towards health and move towards re regeneration, what is it, what I need to do or maybe I don't need to do to let that happen? Uh, and so that's, it's a subtle art. Um, it's not like, oh, tick the boxes and you're done. You learn as you go. You learn with with the practice of doing it on and on and on. And um, yeah, that that would be for me um, maybe an advice to people like practice good conversations. Practice being a good listener. How if you would say things differently, how would that? effect how the other one will speak like being aware of that as you call it that participation it's not because um, I'm not saying anything that I'm not contributing I might actually doing a lot of inner work or try to deeply understand what is the intention be behind what the other one is saying and so There's a lot, what I would call the subtle, the subtle sensing, the subtle cues. The are you actually listening from your heart, or are you just listening from your conceptual space? Like, oh, I hear what they say, but tick the boxes, and that's it. But can you listen from a more generous space or, or maybe compassionate space or if you say something does it actually help the group or is it just your own point of view that you want to push through I mean that all that awareness um, it's yeah we need to learn we need to get better at all of us Thank you so much, Ria. I wonder if you have any anything else uh, that you'd like to add before we close. If I can get one thing across is that you need new practices that build the new culture. It's not by dropping the ones that we don't like and that don't work well that it will magically appear the new culture. The new culture, a culture is, is like, this is how we do these things, yeah? And that means practices, like in Belgium, or in Belgium, we eat bread in the morning. That's how we do these things. That, it, to call it a ritual is maybe too much, but I think it's, it's really important that people gather like, oh, we don't come to the outcomes we want, so we probably need something. And there are practices all around um, that people have tried. So learn from each other. Look them up. <laughs> Try them out. Yeah. Just I was just thinking like in, in uh, behavioral evolution, you have this variability and selection. So you have to, there's a lot of experimentation until you find practices that work and then you can kind of scale them or, you know, show to others. But you need, we need, we are in a stage we need to experiment and to exactly. see what, what, what helps most for particular groups in particular contexts. So yeah, I, I'm with you in inviting everybody who is listening to us to just, experiment and if you find things are not working for you try Adapt. out new things and yeah take take that risk 
Thank you so much, Ria. It was a wonderful conversation. Um, thank you, thank you for for bringing your your voice, your wisdom, and, and experience to this to this uh, space. I hope it was useful for those who are listening to us. My son is also saying goodbye to everybody. <laughs> have, <laughs> asking have his dad nice to pay attention. <laughs> yeah, he's asking my attention, so I need I need to go. I'm being called somewhere else. Thank you, Ria. It was great. Thank you so Bye. much. Bye-bye.